welcome to the Gluten Free Organic. Today we have a special treat in store. We will be making double chocolate cookies. And as always, they are going to be gluten free and dairy free, but full of flavor. They're gonna be slightly crunchy on the outside, nice and chewy and delicious on the inside, full of chocolate, perfect amount of sweetness. It is going to be amazing. And the best part, it's super easy. So, let's get started. Okay, in the stand mixer already is three quarter cup of brown sugar. And I also have a stick of dairy-free vegan butter that I made up yesterday that we are gonna add in here. Make sure it's nice and soft. You can also melt the butter, That's, that works out well too. And next is a half cup of organic sugar. The trick to making successful cookies and to make them having a nice fresh taste and feel good about eating it is using organic ingredients. In goes a free range organic egg. Okay. We're gonna lock the bowl in. Okay, we're gonna mix this up until everything is nice and creamy. And while you have the stand mixer going, Go ahead and add two teaspoons of organic vanilla extract to the mix and keep blending until everything is nice and incorporated and everything is creamed together nicely. Okay, while the wet ingredients are being creamed in the stand mixer, we're going to add one and a half cups of gluten-free flour blend. This is one that I made up. It works great for everything and a quarter cup of blanched almond flour. This is a quarter cup of cacao powder. It's a little bit different than cocoa powder. It definitely has a lot more nutrients, antioxidants. It's just all around really, really good for you. And we also have a teaspoon of sea salt. And the last dry ingredient is a teaspoon of baking soda. Whisk all of these together, and when that's ready, we're going to add it to the wet mix. Okay, we whisk that up for about 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, just make sure that everything is incorporated nicely and it's all one color. And we have switched the stand mixer back on, and we are going to gradually pour the dry ingredients into the wet mix little by little until we make sure that everything is incorporated nicely together and it has all become one. We have everything blended together and one would typically think, okay, everything is mixed together, I don't see any flour, we're done here, time to add the chocolate chips. Here is the biggest tip I can give you with gluten-free baking. When you are using gluten-free flour and it has xanthan gum inside, the xanthan gum is gonna become that gluten that we're missing in regular flour. So the key to activating that xanthan gum and having it work to its full potential would be to keep mixing. Once everything is incorporated, add an extra two to three minutes of mixing onto your baking time. That's what's gonna give your cookies that nice, chewy bite, especially with breads, any kind of baked goods, anything that you're using xanthan gum with, really. The way to activate it is to keep on mixing. Okay, we have everything mixed up. We went an extra two to three minutes once all of the ingredients were incorporated together. Now it is time for the chocolate chips. We're gonna turn the machine back on and gradually add the chocolate chips making sure that everything is nice and even and that the chocolate chips are incorporated into every, every bite that we take out of this cookie. Now the next big secret in making these cookies the most successful way possible is to take the bowl off of the stand mixer, cover it with plastic wrap, and let it set inside the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. If you think about it, basically just clean up the mess you just made, go back to it when you're done, and then you're ready to put them in the oven. Letting them sit in the refrigerator is what's gonna help that gluten-free flour to kind of loosen up, become moist, and it's gonna give you that nice, moist, chewy texture that you're looking for in an awesome, amazing, over-the-top cookie. Our kitchen is clean, the dough has set, and it should look something like this. It doesn't look any different, really, until you go to scoop it. Sometimes it'll get a little bit hard. So we're just gonna pack our melon baller, make our scoops, 
and if you were successful it should maintain a nice stiff ball. So we're going to go ahead and fill up the pan. And this usually makes, I don't know, maybe two dozen cookies. Maybe a little bit more if your cookies are bigger. While you're scooping out your cookies, make sure that you go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees. These are going to cook at 350 for 10 to 12 minutes. And one of the tricks that I use is I do live in the desert where the air is very, very dry. If you're baking in the wintertime or if you do live in a dry climate, it always helps when you're baking to add a pan of shallow water at the bottom of the oven. And you have to do this before it preheats. That way that moisture encompasses all of the oven's interior. This is gonna keep your cookies nice and moist. Prevent them from drying out while they're baking. Timer is going off. Let's check these babies out. All right. Oh, wow. So beautiful. It's lucky, Mommy. <laughs> Our son is really excited, too. <laughs> Instead of using a cooling rack to make things easier, it's already on parchment paper, so I just grab the edge like so and drag it on the back works out just as well. The cookies end up beautiful and you know what? They wouldn't last five minutes on a cooling rack anyways because there's a lot of little hands that cannot wait to get a hold of these. Our cookies have cooled and I'm sure you can see there are quite a few that are missing. Our boys are crazy about these cookies. I make them at least once a week and I feel good about doing it because I know everything that's inside. I know it's made with organic ingredients. I know that the cacao powder is full of antioxidants. The dairy-free butter that I make, which I'm sure I'll post in a future video, actually pretty soon, that might even be the next one. Um, it is, it's amazing. It's so healthy, it's so nutrient dense. Now it's time for the ultimate test. How do they taste? There's a slight crunch on the outside, but as soon as you bite in, your teeth just melt into that ooey gooey chocolate on the inside. It's, it's by far the best cookie I've ever tasted, the best cookie I've ever made, and the kids go crazy over it. My husband loves it too. He cannot get enough of these cookies. When you give this recipe a try, drop me a comment down below, let me know how it turned out, and also let me know how long it lasted. I think the record in our house is maybe 24 hours for a full batch. So let me know how it went. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon because this is the first of many amazing videos with healthy, organic, and as always, gluten-free and dairy-free recipes. Enjoy.